So in the early, uh, this is a question from Steve, and I'm not sure where Steve is from. He wants to know in the early years of Hot Wheels, what competitors did you monitor the closest? What you thought was Matchbox, Husky, Topper, which one of those do you consider? All, all of the above. I used to go out and buy lots of cars and tear them apart and see what they were doing. I was impressed. <laughs> we did that. <laughs> yeah. My story with that one is that uh, the first year Hot Wheels came out, Matchbox, of course, ruled the world. And when Matchbox, when Hot Wheels came out, the European uh, toy market gave an award for the best toy of the year. And Elliot Handler had to fly to England and get the award. <laughs> so that was that was really something at the time. My goal, every year you had to write down your goals. My number one goal was to beat Matchbox. That was my job, to make sure we beat Matchbox every year. And in fact, I was in Hong Kong one time, and there was this huge boat in the harbor, a private yacht, and the name on the back was Matchbox. So I asked somebody, what's with that? They said, oh, that's the owner of Matchbox. I went and put my business card on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm watching them. <laughs> there was uh, an espionage <clears throat> going on at that time also. Uh, I know one of the directors gave me some samples of Matchbox and the uh, black market. And uh, he said, take it back and uh, look at it. And I was a big count. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, so when you did a Hong Kong, I mean, they'd be doing some spiders. Right. There was one time I was really worried. Johnny Lightning sponsored Alan's or Indy. And he won. And I thought, it's all over. You know, I mean, they won. And people are going to just go out and buy, you know, Johnny Lightning. But why would they want a Hot Wheels? We didn't even race Indy. But I thought that that would, that would have been the, the big change right then and there. They won two years. So. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, this question from Matt Craggan, who's the Johnny Lightning designer, uh -huh. okay. was then and is now, and he, he wanted to know, for both of you, what's the essence of a Hot Wheels car? What makes a Hot Wheels car a Hot Wheels car? What qualities must it possess? My version is a Hot Wheels car is a car that came from Detroit, but a guy touched it. He may have only put five spoke wheels on it, but in most cases he put a, a wing or a, a wild tampo or something on it. You know, that was my version of yeah. what it was. Because I was the kind of guy that would go wrench all day on a car, and I, every time I'd see a car, I'd say, that's a great car, but it needs to be lowered a little bit, it needs a five spoke wheel or something like that. And so my version of a hot wheel was always a car that ah, a guy touched. And of course, in Harry Bradley's case, they called and they said, we wanted California customs. That was what started it, and that's what, what it was. It was a car that Harry Bradley started to be customized himself, and it started the whole thing. Yeah. The colors in the cars and those that influenced the hot, slow, fast look. The next question is a technical one comes from Kirk Smith from Arizona. He wants to know what, who's thought of adding a collector number to the Hot Wheels in 1989? Oh, well, you did that before that. Or 89 you know, close uh, numbers, but they just couldn't get a sequence going. There was a cost issue. Right here. How are we going to have different pictures on each part and the collector number and stuff? And it just got too difficult. So, and it cost more money. It wasn't until volume got going. Right. You know, in most cases, you take a card, you put any card in it, you right. don't have to worry about it. But then maybe marketing, you, yeah, they then they thought, like, okay. Found out there were actually guys that were buying this stuff instead of uh, you know kids, and that's what it really did. Enrique Floro would like to know why do you think some of the models have extraordinary detail and dedication, while others are somewhat inaccurate? As a designer, all I can say is it's the designer's job to be as accurate as he could. That's one thing being a car nut, I really enjoyed taking a Hot Wheel, and if you turned it over, you could tell it's front wheel drive. You could tell rear wheel drive, I would always put the exhaust on there, I did everything as accurate as I could. And I think that's what the thing, where the Matchbox cars, you used to turn them over and they, they just had like holes to hold the axles and stuff like that. And so I pride myself on trying to get the car back. Now not everybody is a car now. They don't all uh, know what goes on. So different designers do different ways. And sometimes when you're doing a kid car, the pattern, pattern maker, had some, and the pattern maker, yeah. had something. 
his guilt. Okay. Uh, the next question comes from Tom Wan, and he's from Munich, and he wanted to know uh, who did you hang out when there was so much action in California at the time? You know, did you hang out with racing drivers, designers from the big car brands? Who did you spend time with? Did you race? Who did you do in the real world? Well, I was lucky because I got to do the Stank and so I hung around. You know, every time they showed up, I was there, and I got to show when they were building the cars. I was down there taking pictures with them all the time, and of course. You meet the the, the, the the guys that built the engines. You know, you built the Butera that built some of the chassis. Uh, I would get to meet all those. And being a car nut, I'd run into them anyway because you know, I'd always be doing car stuff. So uh, Dan Gurney, you know, he, he did his car, and, and uh, yeah, geez, I can't think of all the cool people I met through the They were just and Bob had to go out and meet these guys too because we had to go photograph the cars. Maybe that we had to oh, yeah. measure the cars, photograph. Them. Try to get them accurate. Um, Eric Myers from New York City is asking uh, Larry always drove some amazing cars, some of which made it uh, into his collection, Eric's collection. Uh, I know you made yours, but, um, some others. Um, and, I, and he says, that's Eric now, Rob has an interest in early 60s muscle cars. Can you get the guys to talk about the full size cars? What do you drive? What do you do? Oh, go ahead. Uh, you're doing, you're doing almost more cars than I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first, uh, um, we have a 56 Ford Fairlane, and it is red and white. We have a 70 VW Beetle, and uh, it has, it's red also. And uh, then we have a 57 Chevy truck, it's red. And it's got a motor. Yeah, he's driven it. Yeah. He was nitrous. He <laughs> <old thing. laughs> And we've got and that's the, hers, by the way, not yeah. his. <laughs> 65 Mustang, which are based on my autograph shoes that I do. I pick it up and uh, call it Junkyard Bill because the original Bill was uh, mostly part of his junkyard. And uh, he was licensed it, so he was green and blind. And that one is red too, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's red. <laughs> Some feedback. Yes, we told that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I have a 62 Thunderbird Roadster, which uh, we bought from the original owner, and it, it is a documented roadster. So it is a real, a real thing, not an aftermarket uh, uh, tonneau that we put on the back. So if you were to have been there in 1968 first, the rainbow would be just one color. <laughs> She red. <laughs> Any shade of red. No, it has to be orange. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the orange cars. Well, I've got, uh, everybody knows most of my cars because I did with Hot Wheels, but I'm building a 57 Ford two door wagon. It's a uh, Crown Vic Woody. And I'm building a 51 Ford Woody uh, LS motor. Nice car. It's going to be a really, really gorgeous car. And both those are red. <laughs> it's rubbing off. I'm influenced. They're, they're not pure red. They're yeah. candy, pearl, trick things. Okay. Excellent. Um, the last question I got is from Jim Gabaszewski, who runs the Hot Wheels newsletter and is currently in hospital, or was recently there. And he wants to know what do you think of the hobby today? Unbelievable. It's just, uh, we started. Uh, we get phone calls from collectors, you know, and it's not how they get through, but before they just... Well, it's numbers and cuts. <laughs> <laughs> the collectors, uh, like Frank Strauss, you know, he used to call, say, can I talk to, I guess he knew our name by then or something. Yeah. He would just show up and he, you know, and he, he had this idea about collectors and marketing, of course, didn't think there was such thing as collectors. And uh, one of my favorite stories is I did the uh, Purple Passion with the wheels, the skirts over the wheels, which technically you can't do because it goes through the curves and rubs on the die cast instead of wheels. So I kind of did that to find out if we'd sell it. And it sold and all the marketing said, you know what? People are buying cars that don't have to go on track. So that was kind of the beginning of the collector thing. And again, Strauss showed up, we introduced them to the right people and you know, started rolling. So that was the very beginning. And it's hard to believe it ever got to this. Yes, the first collector conventions were like a uh, big part of the you know, beginning of, I think, the 
did one at, uh, in Long Beach, California, at the Harvey Inn, that prominent by me at Long Beach Airport. And uh, we could get up there and answer questions and stuff, but that, it's just not even this many people. Well, again, you got to understand, there were two of us sitting in the corner and nobody cared. So right. we were just doing our own thing and we never thought anything would ever become of it. So. Come on, long yeah, now it's it's you know, now you have a fake fire, you have a yeah, so yeah, 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 warm. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Bob, everybody asks me, and you know the answer to this better than I do, what is a brass car and why did we do it? Well, brass is similar in weight to uh, Zmax, which is zinc, aluminum, magnesium, and uh, other alloys mixed into it. That's where the main thing is. Um, so we decided we got to test these cars to see how they were going to way before production. And a little epoxy model was going to do it. We tried the weights on the bottom and stuff. That was good enough. So we actually can made these brass models. And uh, it just took thousands of hours to take the model shop plastic parts and uh, carved this thing out of brass, machined out of brass. They did this probably for about six or seven years, and then they just didn't care. It doesn't matter what happened, but it was very important that these cars rolled a certain distance that they impacted into a block of uh, wood if they worked on the uh, wheels of the booster that uh, they were born. And so we had a department that tested them. Do you suppose they ever built a brass rear load beach bomb because they changed it because it wouldn't go through this through the wheel? And I wonder how fast they could react it because if they had had a production piece, I don't think they would have been able to react fast enough to build the wide one. So they might have built a brass one, but they were already building the the regular one. Yes, I agree. I think they did. Yeah. Okay, who's got the brass? <laughs> <laughs> the guy that owns the hotel, probably. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, the brass cars are very cool. They're, they're neat looking, and you could just, if you turn them upside down, you can see where the, the guy did the grinding inside to, to, to right. make them the right width oh, and oh, the weight. You know. And what happened with these objects in the past? When they were done, I mean, were those an archive? Or? They were basically thrown away. Yeah, I don't know who could have gotten it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Excellent. I hate it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mostly that. I mean, after all that work, you know, it's yeah. just gorgeous. Yeah. And then when nice I go to you know, something we worked on, you know, how can you see it squirrel? It didn't make any brass band, obviously. Oh, yeah. They made clear bars. Yeah. Do you remember those? Not, yeah, not yeah. brass. Yeah. But yeah, and same with dolls. Uh, any dolls that moved, they would make clear ones, and you could see all the gears inside working because that's how they tell if they worked or not. And a friend clear, of mine, uh, clear scissors. Yeah. And a friend of mine collected those. He had a right. great collection of walking dolls and you know whatever they did at the time. But they were all clear. It was really neat. So when you were in your corner, was there a lot of drama on the other side? They did there, you know. The, the girls had. Their dramas, uh, uh, but uh, they were making money. They could do anything they want. We just had to not bother them. You know? So it was uh, it was uh, an adventure. Let's put it that way. It was it was quite an adventure at the time. And again, nobody cared we were even there. So it's hard to believe that we, you know. And I think I was probably doing better than Bob right now. And then again, he man, the other things that came in. You know, just they were fun to work on too. I did the wheel warriors, all the crazy cars that were supposedly smart. They would fight each other and everything. So that was something different. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, yeah. In, in fact, uh, at that time, boys' toys included things like Big Jim and uh, wheel warriors and uh, master the Matt Mason. Uh, gosh, yeah. uh, Major Matt Mason. Yeah. And, uh, so we got involved with some of that stuff. And, and there were things happening all around. I mean, it's, it's a toy company. It's just fantastic. A little being under you. Yeah. And it was it was a uh, it was a small family too. It was kind of neat because like some of us was dirt ride, motorcycle ride, 
And like the whole group would go out and they'd bring steaks and, and we'd camp up all night. Not everybody rode motorcycles, but it was like a family thing. The whole group would come out, we'd have dinner at night, sit around the barbecue and throw marshmallows at each other and everything, you know? It was just like a small, a small family. Yeah. We all knew each other real well. We knew everybody's kids. Yeah. It was hard to believe that that would end up with this huge, you know, company that's going on right now. It's really something completely different. Thank you. I've got two more questions. So we have another five minutes if I can invite questions on the floor. I have one, and it's one that's been bothering me and a lot of people for a long time. I don't know if you have the answer, but maybe you know who does. And it is in regard to this, that custom Corvette. So we know that, the, I know that the cus that Corvette was released, the first one was released in 67, in September. The, the one one rolled off the floor and was sold to a customer. Prior to that, Three weeks prior to the unveiling of that Corvette, you released the custom Corvette. Was that people have an argument that then they say, oh, it was in 68. I know it had to have been in 67. Yeah. Yeah. Was it in the spring or summer? I'll tell you the story. Harry Bradley was a car designer in Detroit. They hired him to come to California. He knew the Corvette was, well, he was, he was designing the highways the first time, and he didn't know what was going to happen. So finally, they got a theme going here, and he realized that the Corvette would have been a perfect fit, but nobody would talk to him. So supposedly, he flew back to Michigan, somehow got in the back door of General Motors, got a blueprint, and put it, he had crutches, and put it in his crutches, yeah. and came out to California, pulled it out, and he had all the lines right and everything. And uh, yeah, we beat the real car out. Right, by yeah. three weeks. Yeah, exactly. But when was that? Was that in you no, I, he, Harry would uh, be the only person that would know that, but okay. you stop and think about it. Well, it I takes, know, because of takes X amount of time to build a die cast, exactly. so it was a year before. Yeah. yeah. And that was now, what I thought. Everybody always argues, and they say, no, it was 68, but it, it was in the early of 67. It had to been, it it had to have been actually being worked on at our place before the Corvette was, you know, right. was anywhere near to induce. Now, I heard that actually happened to the Viper, too. The Viper came out. Before, and this is recent, it came out before the real car, and they weren't too happy. Right. Now, again, there's legal people that will fight over that. Back then, the Corvette was mad that they wouldn't do it. Right. So I wonder if we're working on the rear engine Corvette now. Uh, yeah. I've, I've done some research on this 67, 68. People said, I know I bought them at Christmas of 67 and stuff. But from my research, has Mattel always started their? product year in October time frame and that's why the 67s are coming up no, as it, when they had the it's car. It's an all year project. I mean, they started a car a year later. Right. Out. But when would it have showed up in the stores you well, know, for sale? It started in 67, but you know, the stores go sequentially, you know, not all at the same time. Right. But maybe the first year they did, uh, they had to start with a maybe the same seven. Because I, I believe that the people had them in 67, even though they're considered 68 release model year. Everybody called them 68, but yeah. uh, even now, all the, the, the new year stuff always comes out right at the end of September, early October, even now. So I was wondering, is that why they remember seeing these in 67? So. Again, and there were rumors when Hot Wheels first hit, of course, they were just unbelievable success. And there were rumors of trailer trucks being hijacked. <laughs> and going right to swap meets. So people actually probably got them before we released them. Okay. And uh, it, we, our guards would actually go to swap meets and walk around and try to find people trying to sell nice. wheels because they weren't out yet. So I think you still have that problem. Yeah, yeah, we do. It's a different problem. <laughs> it's yeah. so exactly, yeah. yeah. I have time for one more question. So, uh, looking around here, yes, please. Is Otto Cooney still with us? I haven't heard nothing about him in years. Good question. I haven't heard that. He isn't around. I don't think he travels very much anymore. Right? But that's. Fine. I got to meet him a few years ago at the uh, convention, yeah, and nice. I happened to have the Sky Show set in my hand. Oh, really? In the elevator by myself with him, and he autographed it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Quality guy. I mean, yeah. it's hard to believe in all those years we found him later. Amy went and said, well, if We're going to do vintage stuff. We should have the vintage artist. And she, we went out and found him. It's hard to believe. 
That stuff just stands out to me. Oh, that, that yeah. artwork. Yep. So good. It's, that's his style. Yep. The other piece of art I like was done by uh, Big Deal, Dave Deal. Remember he did a, a series of cars with the cars up, up in the air with the wheels all bent and everything, the oh, yeah. track bent and everything. Oh, you know? yes. Um, that, I loved his technique, and I hired him to do, do that. And he did very few. He only did a couple of the other things. And uh, oh, I loved his work. It was just good to see his artwork on there. Something different. His son, so called, third idea. Yeah. His son called me uh, gosh, uh, a few months ago. He didn't say he was gone or dead or anything, but he wanted to know if a uh, certain car was real or not. The auto had Oh, yeah. And I uh, said, well, to the bottom. He said, say vintage. He said, yes. Oh. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's it, that. That bothers me because I'm, every once in a while I find a car and I go, oh man, that was, I did such a great job. Uh, that wasn't mine. <laughs> Finish on the bottom. So. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very Good. much. Thank you.